Hello and welcome to the introduction to the Muskegon County Public Drain System viewer. My name is Thomas Van Bruggen and I am the GIS Administrator for Muskegon County. Today we'll be taking you through a tour of the features and available information from the new Public Drain System viewer. Let's get started. When you first load the drain viewer, you will be presented a terms and conditions screen to which you'll need to read through and then agree to. This screen also will give you helpful links and information to get additional resources such as this video, the County GIS website link, and the County Drain Commissioner link. When you're happy with the terms and you're willing to accept them, click the box, click OK, and you'll, presented with, you'll be presented with the introductory view of the Drain Viewer. I'd like to give you a quick tour of the tools available and then we'll actually show you some of the data. On the upper left corner, you'll see the toolbar, and by default, the legend of the map opens up, and this legend itself is dynamic based on what is showing on the map. So as you zoom in and out, layers turn on and off based on zoom scale dependencies, and all of that is reflected in the legend view. The legend view can always be found by clicking the upper left box called legend. The next tool is called the layer list. The layer list presents the list of available layers as well as allowing you to turn on and off independent layers as you want to navigate around in your map. By default, the county drain group, streets, hydrology, right-of-way, and parcel groups are all on, with available layers to be turned on for contours and FEMA flood zones. You will notice that there are two contour layers. The contours live is grayed out. Any layer that is grayed out is because it is not available at that particular zoom scale on your map. But as you zoom in, it would become available. The live layer is very large and is slow to load, but it is very detailed. So if you're willing to give it the time to load when you're zoomed into an individual parcel or group of parcels, it can be very beneficial. The contour layer itself is a pretty fast to load layer and it is presented in three formats, a 10-foot, 2-foot, and 1-foot contours, depending on the zoom scale you actually are at. So I'm zoomed into a group of parcels, several sections, and you can see the 10-foot contours turn on. As I then zoom in, you will now see that the 2-foot contours turn on. If I zoom in further, it will load 1-foot contours, or I could switch to the contours live, which is 1-foot contours as well. Also available is the FEMA flood zone layer, which shows you the areas of the flood zones per FEMA. And again, so you can expand it out and find out that there's zone A uh, and zone AE. These are the areas of the flood zone designations per FEMA. So that is a quick tour of the layers that are available. I'll collapse these and go with our default layers. Our next tool is called the pop-up panel. Before I click that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and click on a parcel within a drainage district. When I click on that parcel, we will be presented with a pop-up box showing us the parcel information that we've received. We can scroll through additional information about that property. Or you'll see that it indicates one of two, and I can click the next feature, and you'll see that it actually selects in blue the drainage district itself. I get some basic information about the drainage district that's available, and I can click Zoom to, and it will zoom to that particular drainage district. If I click the pop-up info panel, it will take that pop-up box, and for the rest of the session in which I'm logged in on, until I close the application, all of my pop-ups will now be on the left side instead of in the middle of the map. That helps clean up the map. So if I'll click a different parcel, It'll, functionality will be the exact same, but it'll just keep that window over docked on the left. From there, the next tool is the base map gallery. Base map gallery allows you to change from our default Muskegon base map, which is what normally is on, and you could choose the 2019 aerial photos. You can zoom in, find these aerial photos, see the features on the map, and again, now if something is blocking your view, you could go back to the layer list and, for example, I'll turn off the county drains group or I'll turn off the hydrology group and it'll take off the lakes and the drain layers. I'll turn those back on and I'm going to change back to the Muskegon base map view for quick reference. 
and show you that our last tool is actually a menu button with some more tools in it. The next uh, tool that I want to talk about is actually not going to be from this menu right now. It's going to be our search menu. We can search by the drain name, the parcel number, the address of a parcel, or an owner of a parcel. In this particular case, I'm just going to start typing in the name of a drain that we have in Muskegon County called the Sachs drain. I just type in Sachs and then wait, and it'll pick up a pick list from all the different features that might match what I'm searching for. So you can see under the drain districts it has Sachs, but it also has some parcel owners that have S-A-X-E in the name. I want the drain district, so I'll click that. It will highlight it, zoom to it, and now I've got that centered on my map. I can then close that search to get that out of the way. The next tools I'll like to show you are the drawing tools. So if I wanted to make a markup for a map that I want to put together for maybe an example of where my property is to share with somebody, I can click the draw tools and I can create push pin points. I could create a line and I can choose different styling. So when I click the line, it gives me different styles I want to choose. So I'm going to just click once to start drawing. I'm using a desktop with a mouse connected. Let's say that was the line I wanted to draw. I can draw a freehand polyline. So if I just press and drag, I can draw that line. I can draw a triangle, rectangle, circle, ellipse, an open polygon. And then I can also do a freehand polygon or I can add text. So I'll just put my property, click on the map, and it will give you that label. I can change the font colors and I can change the size as well. If I hit clear, that would clear all of my drawing that I have done. So all of the features will be cleared. Once I've done my drawings, I may also want to just know that I could actually measure features. So if I wanted to measure the length of this portion of the drain in feet, I could choose the measure distance tool, change it to feet. I might want to zoom in so I can get a little more accurate because it's just going to base it off of what I click and drag. But I'm going to click and drag along there, double click at the end, find out that that segment of the Sachs drain is 873.8 feet, give or take, and it's only as accurate as your mouse clicks and the view on the map. This is not survey grade accuracy, so if you need survey grade precision, you will need to contact a licensed professional surveyor for the state of Michigan. So I'm going to go ahead and return to where I've done my drawings, and I'm going to show you one other feature. Let's say I'm only wanting to look at the Sachs district, but you can see that there's other districts around that seem to be maybe touching or overlapping sometimes. So what we're going to do is we're going to filter by drain district so we don't show all of those. So I'm going to click the filter by drain district, which is off of the more menu button, filter by drain district, type in the first part of the name, so Sachs, turn on the filter, and you'll see that the surrounding polygons have all disappeared, the filled color. The boundaries are still there, but the fill color is now gone to clean up your map a little bit. So I'll center my map, and the last tool I have to show you is the print map. The print map tool allows you to put in a custom title. So I've gotten to the print map from the more menu, print map, it asks for the map title. If you don't change this, it will type it will add in, type a custom title here. You don't want that, so my drain property map. I have a couple of layouts to choose from. By default, it's just a letter landscape map. I could also choose a portrait map. You may also see other choices here for other applications because the printing service that we use puts all of the templates right here. I would just choose, in this particular case, one of the drain viewer ones. Um, by default, you could just leave the letter landscape. That's the one of the best ones to use. I can choose what format I want it to go out as, either a JPEG, PDF, some of the different image files. I'll use PDF. I'll briefly show that there are some advanced tools you could set, whether you want map scale, map extent, um, some of the metadata, what you want put on the map, scale bar, uh, what size the map you want to play with, or most of the time, the one you might want is, if you want just a simple screen print of it, it's 96 DPI. If you want a better resolution print, just increase that number to a higher number. 
I'll leave it as the defaults right now and I'll simply hit print. And when it's creating the print, you can see that it's actually giving you a status bar that it's working on creating that print. And once the print PDF file that we chose this time is available, that status bar goes away and you can see it's called My Drain Property Map. And if I click that, it will bring up your PDF. This PDF now shows all of the features that you had on your map and you could, depending on your browser, either use, I'm using Google Chrome, you could download it using the download button or sometimes in the menu on some browsers, it might be at the bottom of your screen. But based on your browser, you can download, save, then transmit that map where you need to. It gives you basic disclaimer information, a printed date, some information about the map, and your title. We'll return to the map itself. And show you that there's also a home button. So if you wanted to go back to the default of where the whole map displays, you can zoom out to there. I'm going to go back to the filter button and I'm going to turn off the filtering. And then now I'll be able to zoom back in and other drains will display again. I can also go to the drawing menu, clear my map drawings. And that is pretty much the tutorial of how to navigate around the new County Drain System Viewer Map, a new application developed by Muskegon County GIS in conjunction with and with the assistance of the Muskegon County Drain, Commissioning, Drain Commissioner's Office. And we hope that this application helps you find information pertaining to the county drain systems. If you have any questions, see the links on the information panel or the about panel. Two, get in touch with us at either the GIS or County Drain Commissioner websites. Both of those websites have contact pages where you can reach out for more information. Thank you, and if you have any feedback, we look forward to hearing from you.